So the last of our three immunological disorders is immunodeficiency. In an immunodeficiency, what happens is that your immune system does not respond appropriately. It's not over-responding, as in a hyperactivity. It's not responding to the wrong thing, as in a, uh, a autoimmune disorder. It's just not responding. Um, immunodeficiencies can be either primary or secondary. Primary means congenital, and uh, which means you're born with it. Most of the time, if you are born with a primary immunodeficiency, the source is a genetic mutation. Uh, it also could conceivably result from a non-genetic birth defect, something that happened early in development, uh, possibly due to uh, an environmental toxin or disease uh, that the pregnant mother had while the fetus was developing that caused a problem with the development of the immune system. Uh, but most frequently it is in uh, a, uh, it, it's a genetic source. Secondary immunodeficiencies are acquired. They can be acquired early or late. They can be temporary or they can be permanent, but they are something that happens as a result of some environmental factor that affects you. Um, often secondary immunodeficiencies are going to be a result of infection or other stresses, like for instance, malnutrition, um, hyper stressful environments, lack of sleep, things like that. So uh, some examples of uh, primary immunodeficiency would be uh, selective IgA deficiency, this is where your B cells just don't have the ability to make IgA. Um, the, the component of the constant region of the antibody that allows you to make IgA is just mutated. Um, uh, DeGeorge syndrome is a deficiency in T cells. Uh, hereditary angioedema is a uh, mutation in uh, the regulatory uh, regulation of the complement system. Um, so note that all of those that I just talked about are deficiencies for just part of the immune system. And that's pretty common. Uh, now there is one that is a congenital deficiency of the entire immune system. Um, and that's severe combined immunodeficiency, or SCID. And this is a deficiency in the bone marrow stem cells, and you just, like, don't make any white blood cells. You don't make B cells, you don't make T cells, you don't make neutrophils. These people have basically no immune system. Secondary immunodeficiencies, some uh, examples, probably the most well-known is AIDS, uh, acquired immunodeficiency syndrome, and this is a, a virus that infects and destroys helper T cells. So it's going to affect any system that is, well, requires helper T cells. So that's going to be the T-dependent uh, 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 B cell activation, as well as, um, T-dependent cytotoxic T-cell activation. So uh, primary immunodeficiencies are generally rare. Um, they are also often fatal uh, because they are congenital. They happen when you are very young and very vulnerable to disease. So uh, you can have primary immunodeficiencies that affect B cells, T cells, natural killer cells, phagocytes, or complement components. Um, typically, as I said, they're caused by genetic mutations. There are a few exceptions to that. Uh, we talked about selective IgA deficiency. Uh, 
a gamma globulinemia, which is where you just don't produce many antibodies of any type. In the, uh, uh, in the case study that we did was an interesting example of immunodeficiency where the mechanism for antibody class switching was genetically mutated. The CD40 protein, which is the protein that cause is the protein in helper T cells that causes plasma cells to class switch, had a mutation in it, and so that individual produced plenty of IgM, uh, but did not produce any of the other classes of antibodies, which means that they were uh, vulnerable to. Um, mucosal, uh, mucosally transmitted diseases um, because they didn't have any IgA to protect their mucosa. Uh, they would probably have been quite vulnerable to uh, parasitic and worm infestations and just like that didn't show up because we don't get very many of them in our, in our culture uh, because of good sanitation and protective clothing. Um, uh, that would definitely be a uh, primary immunodeficiency. You can have lymphocyte deficiencies, so SCID that I talked about earlier. Um, you just like, you don't produce T and B lymphocytes and you basically have no uh, immune system. Um, so some of you may have heard of uh, the, the bubble boy. And uh, so SCID is, is the disease that he had, um, he had to live his entire life in a, um, in an isolation suit because he had no immune system and would have just been killed very, very quickly by, um, by any pathogen that he encountered. Uh, I believe that the, uh, the bubble boy, actually the parents of him had a second child in hopes of having a uh, bone marrow match and um, use the second child uh, as a bone marrow donor to donate bone marrow to the first child so that he could grow an immune system. Um, but unfortunately, their second child, the donor, um, had been infected with a virus and they didn't know about it. Uh, but it was transferred with the bone marrow transplant and uh, took over the bubble boy's body and killed him off before um, the bone marrow had a chance to take and uh, develop an immune system. So he did eventually die young. Um, in DeGeorge syndrome, the thymus does not develop in the embryo. So T cells basically don't, differentiate, don't happen. Uh, you can have defects in phagocytic cells, so chronic, granulom chronic granulomatous disease, or CGD, uh, means that you don't produce hydrogen peroxide, and hydrogen peroxide and peroxidases are one of the main things that your neutrophils uh, use uh, to destroy cells. They're a component of neutrophil granules. They're also a component of the uh, natural killer cell death package. So that eliminates one of the weapons that your immune system likes to use. Uh, in leukocyte adhesion dis deficiency, your white blood cells don't stick to the sides of your capillaries during inflammation. So they don't undergo diapodesis and uh, extravasation and so you are vulnerable to diseases of the tissues. Um, you, you, the complement system is all made out of proteins and each of those proteins is encoded for by a gene. So um, if you have a mutation in one of the complement system genes, if, if, uh, then you don't have that portion of the complement system. So C1 and C2 are uh, necessary for classical pathway activation of the complement system. And if you have a mutation in them, then you won't get classical activation. Um, later components, um, C5, C6, C7, C8, uh, those are all part of the MAC attack 
So if you lose those, you lose um, activation of the uh, you you lose this this valuable um, component that mostly helps to kill grant negative cells. Obviously, if you have a mutation in C three, then your complement system just simply does not work. Uh, for secondary immunodeficiencies, most of these are caused by circumstances. So old age. Um, as you age, your thymus decreases in size. Uh, you stop producing T cells and um, your B cells begin to senesce. So that causes a general downgrading of the immune system. Um, pregnancy malignancies, that's cancer, infections, especially viral infections, immunosuppressive drugs, malnutrition, all of those can cause secondary immunodeficiencies. Uh, specific viral infections that cause immunodeficiencies, measles, uh, syphilis, HIV, obviously, and uh, multiple myeloma is not a virus, but it's a um, cancer of the plasma cells, uh, causing them to produce large quantities, to replicate out of control and produce large quantities of um, immunoglobulin. So they produce bunches of antibodies, but the antibodies they produce are random, not the ones that you need to actually fight infection. So that basically causes your um, your immune system to waste all of its bullets firing just willy-nilly into the air instead of actually targeting things that would be useful. All right. So